He's hearing voices from another world. Tommy Frazier's dad just got married. Now Tommy's got a new mom. He's going to a new school. Bell Valley Middle School. Tommy doesn't hate school, but it's hard making friends. And his new school is so big, it's easy to get lost. Which is exactly what happens. Tommy gets lost. Lost in a maze of empty classrooms. And that's when he hears the voices. Kids' voices crying for help. Voices coming from behind the classroom walls. Hello and welcome back to Goosebumps Overviews. The show where we talk about Goosebump books and judge them on their merit. Oh boy, it's reaching Halloween time and you know what that means. We're getting down to the wire. So let's kick off the end of the Goosebumps series with book number 59, The Haunted School. And I know what you're thinking, geez, Stein, another Goosebumps book that stars ghosts? Geez, do you know when to quit? <laughs> I mean, hey, I was thinking the same thoughts. I was thinking, hey, if I see another book about camps, if I see another book about ghosts, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. But, thankfully, this one deviates from the typical ghost story narrative. In fact, it takes a complete 180 from that. There's no ghosts in this. Well, I guess it depends on uh, how you define ghosts, per se. Anyway, let's get into The Haunted School. Starting with the cover, like always, this cover is, at first glance, a bit lackluster. I mean, look at it, it's just a bunch of books and papers and... Shoes? Why is there a shoe in this dude's locker? What the fuck? So yeah, it's just a bunch of gray shoes, papers and stuff falling out of a locker. Uh, it is kind of curious how everything is in gray, but uh, the answer to that question will soon come to light. And it actually applies to the story. Good job, Jacobus, you actually read the book. I mean, people have been giving him shit since Ghost Camp, so it's about fucking time, I'll tell you that much. So what really makes this cover is the freaking poster of the skull on the back of the locker. I mean, look at that. That is spooky as hell. I'd be pissing my pants if I saw that. Scariest cover right here, guys. No, I'm just kidding. What's scary is the eyes in the locker. That's a pretty nice touch. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, you look at first glance, you're like, oh, it's just, that's not scary, it's just a... Uh, ooh, a spooky locker opening by itself, woo! And then you look real close and you see, oh, there's eyes in there, that's pretty spooky. Yeah, the eyes are a real nice touch, and you can kind of get a glimpse of the people's faces, so... A plus there. Everything is gray in this, and that does take a big part of the story. And we're gonna get into that, and I really like what they did with this. I really do. This story stars the character of Tommy. Now, Tommy is, uh... Well, we don't really learn too much about Tommy. He's kind of a fish out of water, in a sense. He's got a new mom, new school, new town. He's really trying to fit in. So he tries to help out with a school dance in order to, you know, gain some friends and all that. And he can, becomes friends with this kid named Ben and a girl named Talia. And things are going pretty well until he ends up getting lost in the school one day. Wandering around, completely lost in this huge school building. Believe me, I know the feeling. So he's running around, and in the art room, he hears noises like kids laughing. He bursts in, thinking it's, it's going to be his friends. The whole room's empty, which is a decent buildup of a scare. I like that. Good job, Stein. So uh, Tommy's walking around looking for the gymnasium, and he ends up walking to this room full of statues, full of these kids. Then he's walked in on by the principal, who explains these are statues of kids that went missing. Which, now that I think about it, 
that's kind of weird. Why would you make statues of an entire class that disappeared? That's kind of that's kind of foreboding and creepy. I guess this must be a really rich school or something. But I, I feel like that would scare people off more than anything. The fact that he describes them as like mannequins with like wigs and stuff and they're super detailed, that's just kind of creepy and weird. Which builds on the story's atmosphere, but in reality makes very little sense. So the story really starts off on the night of the dance when uh, Ben and Tommy are trying to get to the third floor really quickly. They find this boarded up elevator and decide, hey, we could just take the elevator instead of taking the stairs because, you know, kids are lazy, ha ha ha. Uh, they end up getting trapped in the elevator, not knowing how to get out. They hit the red button, which, uh, you know, the emergency button instead of, like, trying to, I don't know, find an emergency hatch or something. But they hit the emergency button, and it, the elevator ends up taking them sideways. Sideways into this darkness. This dark, gray world. And I love the moments like that they're, they build up the introduction to the gray world. It's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, this story is pretty good. Not a typical ghost story, it's like a, another world. They get transported into a gray version of the world. Which is basically like everything's in grayscale except for Tommy and Ben. And like they come across the kids, and some of the kids are sane, and some of the kids have gone complete Lord of the Flies. And they've been there for about 50 years, uh, and they haven't aged. I, I guess they can't die or anything, or feel pain. One of them said they had a cold and they can't get rid of it ever, so I guess they're in constant suffering. And I really like this premise, I really do. But really what ruins it for me is the lack of details. Details make the story, and this story lacks so many details which could have made this almost perfect for me. But overall, it is really great. I love the moments that moments of fear running away from the children and all that. And I feel like, besides all the details, another thing that really brought this down to me is the fact that this is a kid's book. Because on its own, this premise could have been really demented. We could have dived in how the kids, uh, you know, the suffering of the children. Maybe even add some more crazy shit that these kids are doing, you know? And some of the ways that they deal with this problem, like the they deal with the other uh, crazy kids, is they use color against them since they still have color, and I think that's pretty ingenious, really. But... How the story ends... Well... How the problem is resolved in this story, I would kind of classify as a deus ex machina, because it just kind of comes out of nowhere in their time of a need. And the twist at the end, the very end, kind of goes back to what I said about details and not there not being too many, which is a bit of a disappointment, really. <sighs> and the twist is depressing kind of stupid and just kind of confusing and really who wants that to end such a great book serious this book kind of brings me to a kind of a silent hill feeling and i love silent hill so if this is going to remind me of silent hill that's like an a plus right there so yeah good book really i just wish it ended better All right, let's go to spoiler territory for this. I don't have much to spoil, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. So uh, they can get out of the world by using Keller. Their friend Talia arrives in the gray world. It uh, turns out she belongs there, I guess. Uh, she was one of the original kids to be sent there, along from the kids from 1947. And uh, she wears all this makeup to cover up the fact that once she got out of the gray world, she remained gray. And I got, I'm not certain if Talia has the ability to age once she's outside of the gray world, because she said she was only outside for like two or three weeks. Her reasons for wanting to stay in the gray world don't make much sense to me either. She just said she was upset that she got bullied and wanted to be with her friends, but she had the power to bring her friends out of there. 
I have a feeling she's gonna change her mind real quick. So yeah, that was kinda, I don't know, that was kinda weird. But she gets Tommy and Ben out of there by telling them the secret that if you draw a circle of lipstick on the wall, you can crawl through it and come out, I, I guess. Yeah, basically they just draw a portal with uh, red lipstick. A portal of color. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's okay, I guess. It's kind of it's kind of smart, but Talia coming out of nowhere was kind of silly. And just her staying there is kind of silly, too. I was also kind of hoping there would be a climax with the crazy kids, but once we get away from them, we don't really hear too much about them. What would have been cool would be, like, maybe the crazy kids, like, break into the school and try to kidnap uh, Tommy and Ben and kill them or do some crazy voodoo shit to them. I don't know. That would have been awesome. But that doesn't happen. So they make, they get back to the dance, everything's okay, and then they get their picture taken. So I didn't mention this before, but the kids described they were sent to this gray world by pissing off a photographer named Mr. Chameleon, which is a stupid name, uh, but uh, kind of ties into the gray world, I guess. Hmm. Not much is described about Mr. Chameleon's motives. Or Mr. Chameleon himself, which I feel like if we got more information about that, that would have uh, made gave, given this ending uh, a lot more closure, a lot more sense. But really, he's just kind of an asshole who sends kids to suffer forever. Uh, is he related to Vanessa from Chicken Chicken? Because I'm getting that feeling. Okay, so overall, good book, but kind of disappointing in some senses, just because there's so many details missing. And my psychotic mind has made all these missing details really demented. And I want to see a movie on this, really. With my demented ideas, just it's an input in there. I, don't, I didn't want to say this in the video, because if I end up, if, if like, let's say there is a movie that comes out like this, and for some reason I'm involved in it, Someone's gonna find this video and say, Oh, we've got a lawsuit on our hands, people. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really familiar with copyright law, but I feel like someone could make a really good movie on this premise. Probably have to pay off Scholastic, though. Damn vultures. So anyway, guys, that has been my review on The Haunted School. I hope you all enjoyed. And make sure to stay tuned for next episode when we cover a werewolf story. Wow, we haven't seen one of those in a while. Werewolf Skin, book number 60. Have a scary day, guys.